Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm talking about episode 6 of season 2 of Game of Thrones called The Gods Old and the New. Uh, as always, we have loads to talk about, but before I get to that, I have to give the usual disclaimer. I have read all the books, but it has been more than a year since I read A Clash of Kings, so if I forget some stuff or I get show and, continu show and book continuity mixed up a little bit, please forgive me. So anyway, um, let's, get, let's dive right into it and start talking about the character of Theon. Wow, we're really seeing his, his journey down the path of darkness, his fall to the dark side here. And I like how it was explicitly spelled out in this episode that there are two guiding mottos, I, I think, I guess we could say, that are driving Thenon, and neither one of them is driving him to a place he truly wants to go. And the first, of course, being that of his, you know, his birthplace, the Iron Islands, and the idea of paying the iron price, of taking what you want by force and by blood. And the other one is the one, the, the motto he was raised with since he was, what, nine or ten years old? The idea of he who passes the judgment must swing the sword. And Thenan is, of course, trying to live up to both of them. And neither one of them makes him happy. It causes him to essentially betray the only people who really he could consider his friends, if maybe not exactly his family, to kill a man who not only taught him, but to he, he admired, and to lose the respect of all those people that he had known for, what, about half of his life? Um, and honestly, I mean, to, to drop a small boiler spoiler from the books, it was even worse there, where he flat out all but raped a woman if I'm remembering uh, the way things happen there so yeah this is it I mean it, it's definitely a, a very dark episode a very dark scene but as uh, as it tends to be it was actually even darker in the books and it is wonderfully summed up by Braun that that conflict that sense of betrayal when he asked Thenan, did you hate us that whole time? And you know what? I'm not even sure if Thenan can answer that. And if he can, I have the feeling that the answer would be no. And I think out of everything that's happened, saying that to Braun would have been the thing that he would most not want to do, even beyond killing Sir Roderick. Because if he did admit that, then... Braun's next question would have to have been, then why are you doing this? And honestly, despite his you know, stated intentions of wanting to be accepted by his father, by the people uh, of, the, of the Isles, I don't think even Theon really knows why he's doing this. But anyway, we've got so much more to talk about. Let's um, keep going on. Uh, since I had uh, previously mentioned this, I might as well keep going down this uh is that uh, one thing about the TV show is there's, to put it bluntly, a lot less rape in the TV show than there is in the books. Uh, I know one of my uh, my friend Teresa, she really is extraordinarily uncomfortable with seeing that sort of thing in uh, movies and fiction and things like that. And she was quite gl glad that they uh, exercised some of the stuff that happens in Heron Hall. If I remember the books right, some of the uh, serving women there are basically put in stocks and made free for public use. And then of course we that brings us to what happened with the attack on the nobles in King's Landing. Um, again to uh, drop a small spoiler from the book, um, one of the noble women, poor Lollies, the unfortunately named Lollies, ended up getting gang raped by 50 guys. Yeah. And, but here they Lollies, either she's one of those nameless noble women who just happens to have been hanging around or she's just not there, period. But here, the TV show, you know, it is in dealing with this really very disturbing subject matter, does do something very smart in terms of storytelling and moves that attack from Lollies, who's this minor character who most of us don't particularly care about in the books, and moves it on to Sansa. And 
while you know that certainly is unfortunate for Sansa, it does make for a much more dramatic scene because we know Sansa, we care about her, and we certainly do feel bad for her given her giving everything that's been happening to her. And this, of course, just only adds to the absolute horror of everything that she's going has going on around her. And it does, and her being rescued does provide a very nice character moment for the Hound. It is interesting that the only time he ever seems to show any sort of his softer side is around Sansa, and that he even calls her, although a bitly, seemingly with a little more than a little bit of mockery in his voice, little bird. Now, um, whether we're, what you think about that in terms of shipping, I'm just going to leave to you. I. Uh, I really don't want to get into that. As I've said in some of my other reviews, I stay away from shipping. And discussing it on the internet never seems to end well. But anyways, um, hmm, I guess as long as we're talking about uh, relationships, it wouldn't be a bad time to hop over and talk about Rob uh, real quick. It would seem that the character of Jenny... Um, is being replaced by Talisa. Excuse me, I'm looking over at my notes. I'm bad with names, so this is the way I keep stuff like this straight. Um, I don't really mind this. Jenny was not a hugely important character in the book. She was really more of a plot device than a character, if you ask me. And here, by making Talisa the character, we get to sort of see the relationship between them build with the books in the books with Jenny it really all happens off screen I, I do have to kind of agree with George R. R. Martin that he had, when he did say in an interview that I saw that he sort of kind of wished that maybe he'd made Rob a, a, a viewpoint character in the books but as he also said if they had done that then it would certainly would have spoiled the bombshell that dro Rob drops later on in this later in the latter part of this of his arc. So um, I do have to give the actress playing Talisa credit. I uh, it is very a very uh, she has a very understated charm, but it's very easy to see why Rob would be attracted to this woman, and why she would push him not deliberately, of course, to make some of the decisions that he does make later on. And of course, there is the fallout that comes from that. But uh, that's that stuff is gold, and that is stuff that's going to make the people who are not going to uh, not familiar with the books just absolutely wet their pants. So I promise I will not spoil something like that. That was, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. So let's uh, talk. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Since we've got the, we're talking about Starks more or less. Let's go and talk about good old Jon Snow. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Yes, we finally have Egret. For some reason, when she, whenever she says that in the books, I always hear the guy who does, who sings the You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Also the voice for many years of Tony the Tiger in the Frosted Flakes commercials. Anyway, yeah, for some reason I always in my head hear her saying it like that. Um, I don't think uh, the actress that's playing Ygritte is going to be able to quite uh, live up to that, but that's certainly no knock against her. That's just the uh, bizarre thinking pattern that goes on in my head, warped horribly by so very many years of American television. Anyway, um, I do, I do like that she has that spirit, that spark, that flat-out fire that Ygritte definitely seems to have. And she does have, of course, the red hair, whether it's natural or, or from a bottle. I, I really honestly don't know. But she does very much embody what Ygritte, I think, should look like. And I do like that. Uh, the only quibble I have with that, really, is that in the books, it's especially it is mentioned flat out that Ygritte has uh, slightly crooked teeth, while the uh, young lady playing her on the show clearly has quite excellent teeth, especially for someone who's spent their entire life living in the wilds. Not exactly realistic, but you know what? I'm going to allow the show that with no major complaints. Um, oh yes, uh, let's uh, briefly hop back to King's Landing. I forgot to mention this. 
Uh, the Tyrion, we have our obligatory Tyrion being absolutely awesome stuff. The scene with him and Cersei where she tells him that she hopes that he finds someone he genuinely loves simply so that she can someday take them away from her. Take her away from him. Well, certainly no uh, coincidence that later on we get a little bit of a scene with Shay and her warning uh, Sansa not to trust anybody. But what is wonderful about that scene between Cersei and Tyrion is that after she says that, Tyrion just doesn't say anything. Because, really, what is there to say? There can be no peace, no reconciliation, no love between Tyrion and Cersei. And if there ever was a time when that could have been possible, it is long past. And sending Marcella away to Dorne has... You know, it's not even sealing the deal. It's not even putting another nail in the coffin. It's dumping, a, you know, the 37th truckload of dirt on a coffin that's been buried for God only knows how many years. But, you know, um, I, must, I, I cannot express just how much credit I have to give to Peter Dinky, Dinkley. Oh, God, I, I have, I'm so sorry. I cannot get that guy's name right. Just the look on his face, the, the subtle motions of how he turns away. It says more than any words ever could. And then Tyrion goes and, bitch, and bitches at Joffrey and slaps him again. That was awesome. That was something we've been needed. That's something we've been needing. Okay, so I'm um, running low on time, so let's uh, speed things up. Um, uh, they are using Peter in a very wonderful way. It's He's, he's really doing a great job serving, okay, admittedly, is a bit of deus ex machina to condense the plot to make things happen, to speed things along. So I have to give the writers a lot of credit for that. And as long as we're in Harrenhal, we certainly have to pay some respect to the absolutely fantastic scenes between uh, Arya and Tyrwhin Lannister. I mean, man, the, you know, both the actors there are just absolutely knocking out of the park. And it really is doing a lot to shape to, sh to flesh Tyrion out as a character, to you know, give him a little humanity. In the books, I just always felt like he was just in you know bastard, 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 bastard mode, constantly. So here, um, him sharing that story about his father, him obviously you know genuinely praising Arya, even though he just thinks she's a common gr commoner girl, that really does give him a much needed dose of humanity. And of course, Arya uses her second uh, on. Jeez, I don't even remember the guy's name, and it's not even as if he's important. All all that really matters is that it's that guy rather than just some nameless who who gives a damn knight bragging about how he and his buddies gang raped a girl like it was in the books. And the scene where the door opens and the guy just falls over dead, and Arya just basically telling her uh, her little assassin friend, do it right now, and just that look he gave her. You know, just wonderful acting, wonderful writing on the part of everybody in the show. And again, changes to the story being made in a smart way. That is what makes this, really, one of the greatest adaptations that I have ever seen of anything. And I just and I'm saying that as considering I just saw Avengers the other week, so yeah. Okay, so almost out of time. Uh, great stuff with Osha. Uh, not certainly including that uh, rather nice nude scene. I'm certainly not going to complain about that. Osha also gets to be some pretty badass. And it looks like the thing with stuff that's going to be happening with Bronn is also going to be condensed. Hopefully, I thought it dragged on a little bit in the books. Hopefully we'll soon get to see the um, frog girl, swamp girl, whatever they called her in the books. Anyway, great episode. Loved it. Almost out of time. Until next time, guys, take care and have a good one.